Good morning. This morning I'm going to cover INF 1511, May, June 2016. Question 1, the full question. Okay. First of all, it starts off with three multiple choice questions. And what it's doing is it's uh, asking here, the something allows us to set the initial properties of all the components we use in the user interface. And when you scroll down the list, it uh, might feel confusing. But in general, the object inspector is something that uh, you'll see often. And here is a copy of the object inspector, where you've got your components here. And you can choose your component. And then it's got a properties tab, which allows you then to change names and change captions or edits or um, text whatever whatever you require or whatever is available for that component um, so like for the label we know that we've got a caption so there's the caption property and then for an edit component you'll see it's got a text um, a text option here, and that is uh, just examples of the property so the first the answer for the first one is obviously the object inspector. Okay. The second one, the properties that can be set statically through the object inspector can also be set in the program uh, through, and it's called assignment statement. And you'll find this on page 9 of the textbook, and the previous one you'll find on page 3 of the textbook. Uh, where uh, you're basically saying, I want to set this uh, value of label to the text or to something else so that's basically the assignment statement in the third one it's asking here the name of the form can be changed the only way that a name can be changed is at design time which is correct but that's not how you change it so the only way that uh, it can be changed is through the object inspection are the name property so if you have a look here and you click on the form you'll see there's a name property over here and there's the name so that's where this one comes from over here okay so those are the three easy multiple choice questions now the next one is a little bit more tricky but I see uh, some people have got it almost right, but I don't know if the lecture is really that precise about it. But it says here, give the code required for the button removed selected from list click event. The code must include a check that the string has been selected and also prompt the user that the correct string has been selected. Relevant error messages must be included. So now what I'm noticing is people are all saying, okay, well, let's name the list box uh, LST fruit, okay? And let's say that if the item index is less, is greater than less than one, which means uh, in Delphi language uh, zero, okay, is greater than zero, um, then, uh, then it can go and delete the, um, the item that's selected or else it must show them an option that no item was selected. However, they've added here that they said the code must include a check that the string has been selected and also prompt the user that the correct string has been selected. So they want you to make use of a prompt. And that prompt is, for me, is done through this message dialog. And where it's confirming or asking the user, are you sure you want to delete the item rather than not? So I've I've added it to my code here. So as you can see, I've created the form. I haven't got the nice image like they've got, but uh, that's besides the point. The rest of it uh, is working. So now if I execute my code, the program will will run. Okay, Lazarus doesn't like the delete selected. But in uh, in the in, in Delphi, it, it accepts that delete selected. Okay. Um. So when I execute my code, it won't delete the item, but it, it'll prompt me still. 
So if I go and I choose oranges and I say remove from selected, here it's asking, are you sure you want to delete the item? So if I if I said yes, it would it won't do anything. But if I say no, you'll see it says you have opted out, which is appearing over here. And then if I if I haven't selected something, you have to you have to rerun it, run the code, and then um, not select anything. And you'll see the other message: no item was selected, um, which would appear. So I think that was what they're trying to accomplish for this specific question for these four marks. It's just to identify that giving the option MB yes or MB no, and then we confirming that if it's M MB yes, then they can delete the selected, and if it's not, then they can just say they, they opted not to do this. Okay, so I hope that helps a bit with that question. Um, the next, the next question. I'm just going to go and reopen my project. Um, file is open recent. Uh, this one. Okay. Um, okay. Close this project. Close this God. Um, and choose there. Okay. And I'm ready for the next one. Okay. So. Uh, the next question was question 5, which stipulates here, uh, what is the data type of, an in, of the input of an edit box? Well, we know that an edit box accepts string values, so the data type is a string. Um, add the relevant comments in the following piece of code at A and B uh, by explaining the use of the function. From here, what I could read is that we basically trimming means that it's going to remove any spaces from the, um, the text. So that's what I've put here. The blank spaces are removed from the string in the edit edt name component. Then from from that trim, it get, then gets converted to an uppercase. So I said converted to uppercase. And then after that, it's now being assigned to the string variable s name. So I've specified that uh, and assigned to the string variable s name. The comment b, I'm saying basically the result of the conversion for the string variable s name is assigned to the edit name component. So it's basically going to return this new uppercase string that's got no more blanks back to the edit component um, and it's going to yeah, display it in the new format that the user, uh, user clicked on. Okay. So now 7a, um, yeah, there's two ways of doing uh, version B, but 7a is quite simple. So see the user interface below and answer the following question. So as you can see here, this is a um, is a string, uh, what's it? Ah, it's a said box, sorry. Um, yeah, said box. Uh, yeah. And so this holds dot values, and then this is an edit component, and so this edit component has basically got uh, string values. So you have to convert those string values into um, floats or reals. So what I've done in my code is I've given two options here. Um, for option A, obviously I'm taking the, the I'm assigning the said result value, this one over here, um, to a uh, to to the first value times the second value. So I've named these said first and said second. So that's what's displayed over here. And then uh, for the second one, I could have declared, what I did was I would have declared um, three variables and I would have uh, made them of data type real. Then I would have said to them, assign the first and the second values from these edit boxes. I would have converted them from a string to a float and assign them to this, this variable, first and second. And then the result would have done the calculation 
and then it would have been passed to the uh, the edit result box uh, or component and that I would have converted from a float to a string so you can choose either one of these two options this one just looks very untidy for me but it is also an acceptable answer I did test it and you can see for yourself that it does uh, work according to uh, what they wanted us to do so let's go ahead and show you <clears throat> All right, so let's go and put a 10 in here and a 5 in here. It comes up with a result of 50. If I go and put another 10 in here and 5 in here, it comes up with a result of 50. But this could be uh, easily a 10.2 or a 5.5. And there you can see it comes up with a, a float value. So thank you for watching. I hope this has just helped with uh, answering some of the things that the, I believe the lecturer is looking for in question one. Good luck with the exam. I'm sure you guys will do well. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.